Let's say for the sake of discussion, you are Ferdinand Piach, and you single-handedly reinvented rallying with the Audi Quattro back in the late 70s. Then you decided to make a serial production car, granted hand-built, that went 250 miles an hour out of the box. Where would you go next? Perhaps in the other direction and make the most efficient car in the world. Some of you guys know I'm a bit of a techno geek. Back in a different life, I used to work for Apple Computer. And the same gene that got really excited when I got a new Newton gets excited when I see this. And that's because it's all techno-like. It is designed for one purpose. It's designed to go 310 miles in range. But it's not an Audi Q7 that has a 21 gallon fuel tank. It has a 2.6 gallon fuel tank. So how does it go 310 miles on 2.6 gallons of fuel. Well, there's a couple of reasons why. Let's start with the first. So let's step back into Ferdinand's history. Remember the Porsche 928? That had a 0.36 coefficient of drag. Remember all the advertisements that would beat the hell out of that car because of the bad coefficient of drag? Well, let's step to today. Mercedes E-Class. You're probably gonna think I'm lying, but a Mercedes E-Class has a 0.26 coefficient of drag. That's actually really good. This car has a 0.189 coefficient of drag. That is the best out of any car on the planet, bar none. So here's the secret on how you get to 0.189 coefficient of drag. Take a look at the seats here. Notice that they're staggered. You've got the driver's seat a little farther forward than the passenger seat. So basically what that does is it enables you to put the driver and passenger closer together, thus making the frontal area of the car more narrow. When you have the car more narrow, the coefficient of drag goes down. Now there's a second benefit to that. So if we've got the passenger this far back, you've got more room in a frontal collision. You don't need a passenger airbag, hence you lower the weight by not having an extra airbag. Now, for you lawyers out there, in Europe, you don't really need the second airbag by all the municipalities. In the U.S., you actually would need the second airbag. So while we're talking about weight, this entire piece here, all the way around, is made of carbon fiber. So if you remember, kind of in a lease, you've got an aluminum tub that comes up to here to build strength because there's no roof here. But if you've got this cross member here, you don't need to make the step over so high. So all of this is carbon fiber. Just this one piece, this monocoque shell piece, is 197 pounds, so when you add in the propulsion system and you add in the wheels, even an air conditioning system, the car weighs 1,700 pounds. Now, the next question is, how does it go? Motorman sagt, dass ich Ihnen heute etwas über das XL1 ähm, Fahrzeugkonzept erklären soll. The car has a two-cylinder TDI engine with 47 horsepower. Then we have a clutch and an electric machine. The electric machine has 20 kilowatts and then it goes straight to the uh, gearbox, a seven-speed DSG gearbox, um, and the system power complete is um, 70 horsepower. And yeah, it's a plug-in hybrid. Uh, that means you can drive in the hybrid mode or in the electric mode, pure electric. And the range of the pure electric mode is uh, 31 miles. There's two interesting little tidbits we forgot. Number one, where's the mirror? There's actually no mirror. This car is the first car that actually has a legal, at least in Europe, a legal camera system to use as the rear view mirrors. So on the side of the car, remember, it was all about efficiency. This is a way to get to 1.89 coefficient of drag. And then inside the car, each side has a little screen, an LCD screen, and there's two modes. There's one mode for side mirrors and there's one mode for rear view mirrors. And then there's another interesting thing about this car. This looks like carbon fiber, doesn't it? Turns out it's only painted to look like carbon fiber. It's actually press board. Riddle me this. What does a Volkswagen XL1 and a Ferrari La Ferrari have in common? They're both incredibly hard to buy. Here's why. They're very limited. This car, they're only gonna make 200 of these. There's currently 50 floating around a test fleet that uh, civilians around Europe are actually giving feedback to Volkswagen. After those, they're gonna make another 200. And so it's gonna be a serious production car. But to get that, you don't just roll into a Volkswagen dealer and say, hey, I wanna buy one of these things and flip them a couple of bucks. What you have to do is go to a website, fill out an essay and say why I would be a good candidate for a Volkswagen XL1. And then if you are anointed by Ferdinand Piach, 
you will have the privilege to pay $150,000 to drive the most efficient car in the world. Now here's a PS to this whole thing. Many people ask me, what do you think will be a collector car in the future? I'm willing to bet you this. Okay, so here's the script. For a new Moto Man film every week, click subscribe. And to get a sneak peek of what's coming up on the show, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, Moto Man TV, all one word.